Next up, we are sewing our china asters. My goodness me, look at the asters. Absolutely incredible. I want to grow all the colours all the time. So what I've decided to do is create a blend for you. A jolly mixture of absolutely everything. So today we're going to start our china aster and if you look over my shoulder you will see the bed in the paddock with the anemones and ranunculus blooming in it now is the very same bed that we grew the china asters in last year towards the end of the season so they're a very good one if you've got anemones and ranunculus or anything that's flowering really early they're a very good one to bed flip with later because they're going to take a while we probably won't be planting them out until june so you've got plenty of time for those flowers to bloom and have their moment in the sun before you're ready for something fresh and that can be your asters this is the aster trial patch and I think it is a resounding success. I'm absolutely thrilled to bits. Let me remind you, it is almost September and these flowers are as fresh as spring. And the other thing is, this bed held the ranunculus. Now, I know I'm not supposed to be talking about ranunculus yet, Neil says. <laughs> However, I think I can get away with it if I show you this exact bed just a few months ago this spring and then you can see what you can do with one piece of space Now, China asters, or Calistephus chenensis, you'll probably guess, are from northern China. And they're very unusual in the fact that they need the really long days to produce good vegetative growth. Quite often, the really long days or the short nights, which is really the truth, um, promotes bud formation. But in Calistephus chenensis, it's the opposite. Bud formation is triggered when the days start getting shorter. I know we don't want to talk about that at the moment, but the good news is they are perfect to sow in the summer. Don't sow them too late because they do need a good long period to grow into strong plants. So if you're thinking, oh, I might sow them in June or July, they won't have long enough because our summers get cut short by the frosts. They won't have long enough to turn into mature plants. So about now is perfect. I sowed them last year in the first week in May. So this is the ideal time if you want to grow along with me. Before I get started, I'm just pre-moistening my seed trays so that I can sow the seeds straight on to damp compost. That saves dislodging the seeds later when you've carefully sown them. So these are our China aster seeds and you can see I've already made a good start. So the choice is to either sow one seed per cell into the center or if you prefer, what you can do is sow two seeds per cell and then you can either pull out the weaker seed later on. We're not going to do that, are we? No. <laughs> so if I sow two seeds per cell, oops, I've dropped one. Let's just move that out of the way. There we go. Put them in opposite corners and then that means that we can leave them to grow on in their own individual space. And then when it comes to potting on time, we can then separate them gently and give them their own space to grow on in their 15 cell trays. And by that time, they'll be a lot less fragile and easy to move. The choice is short though. If you prefer just to sow one seed per cell, then you can do that. Don't forget your label. Now, you can see that I have pre-moistened my seed tray ahead of time, which is a much better way of doing it. However, if you've forgotten, then what you can do is just get a tray of water, let me see, and then leave the tray to gently water from underneath, and then we'll give them a clear propagator lid, and depending on the weather, we'll take them up to the house or leave them in the warm greenhouse. 
not covering the seeds with any compost and I'm just placing a clear propagator lid over the top just to keep the environment nice and humid and the seeds moist. Now China asters like a warm germination period of about 20 to 22 degrees so a warm windowsill in the house if you don't have a heat mat and then just keep an eye on them they'll take about a week to germinate and then bring them out into the greenhouse so they get as much light as possible we're not quite out of the woods yet so keep an eye on the temperatures if we get any cold snaps and they might have to have the odd overnight stay in the kitchen here we've got the asters i've just brought the tray down to my greenhouse i'm going to take the lid off for the day because that lid really helps keep the environment humid around the seeds that are just sitting on the soil surface and you can see we've got excellent germination i've got two different varieties here the one thing you need to be careful of with all seeds that are sown just on the soil surface is at this time of the year the sun is starting to get quite hot so you don't want to put your tray in full belting sunshine while they're just germinating because that will dry the surface of the compost out. And if you dry the surface of the compost out, the chances are you'll dry the seed out and that could kill it. So best thing to do down to the greenhouse, definitely but just give them a little bit of shade just until they get going and they're less fragile. And then we can be less careful with them, but they've done so well. Look at all those flowers. So So here we are at the China Asters. It's seven days since I started the seeds. Everybody's just about up now, but you can see, look how behind some of them. They will take their own sweet time, but they are coming. Look at that. And you'll notice that the seed tray is still looking really moist. I have not watered it since starting. So that means I've been keeping that propagator lid on and keeping the tray out of direct sunshine. So the seedlings don't frazzle in the heat and the compost doesn't dry out through evaporation. But yeah, I think it's going to be a bumper crop this year. I thought you might like an update on the China Asters basking in this late afternoon sunshine. Now you need to be careful that you don't overwater your China Asters, but they also don't like drying out. So. We're a bit later in the season. On occasion, the greenhouse will get very hot. On those days, I tend to either push the trays out of the direct sunshine, under the shade of the staging, not into the shade, but just out of the sunshine. But what is a lot easier is to use some horticultural fleece as a shade cloth. You can drape that over the plants, it's nice and light. That will give them some respite from the full belting sunshine, but it will still provide them with plenty of daylight. It will help slow the transpiration down and evaporation so the soil won't dry out quite as quickly and you won't have to water them as often. We've got plenty of ventilation. You can see the fleece moving in the air. So that's key. And then this will just help with the evaporation to keep the evaporation down so you haven't got to water quite as often. Got my little alfresco potting bench and I'm just moving the china asters from their 40 cell trays into 15 cell trays and then by the time that the stocks are finished these can go in and take over until the end of the season so i just thought i'd show you this i've only got one leaf that's been affected but this is a leaf miner now the problem with leaf miners is they live inside the leaf so it's very difficult to get rid of them once you've got them because the sprays can't get them because they're inside so what i would recommend is just keep a keen eye look out for it and if you see it remove the entire leaf there we go and to be super safe i'd pop that out with the rubbish rather than in your compost now china asters produce beautiful blooms atop tall slender stems so we will not be pinching them pinching them diverts the plant's energy from one stem into two or more stems making the resulting stems more slender that is not required for china aster asters you don't pinch those at all they've got very very slender stems i'll run a video for you in a minute so no pinching of your asters in the next couple of days, I'm going to come down here with my camera to get the pictures for the January seed shop. I know lots of you are growing these 
this year for the first time. I bet you're glad now, aren't you? And can you see what I mean about the stems? The flowers are absolute whoppers, but the plants are so tall and the stems are so slender, making them perfect for bouquets and arrangements. I'm just cutting some of my aster stems and I'm cutting right at the base of the stem there. Can you see my secateurs? Now, some plants can be sensitive to certain diseases, especially when they're not native to the UK. They don't get a chance to build up a resistance. With asters, it's fungal diseases. So the most sensible precaution is to make sure that you don't plant them in the same space next year. So I'm gonna move my asters around the garden. So if there is a risk of any fungal spores being dropped last year, uh, ready to reinfect my plants this year, they won't be able to. They stand a chance of passing that disease on. So fast forward now to July. Look at the China asters. So you can see that later sowing, sowing only when the light levels are nice and high, has enabled the plants to put on very good vegetative growth. There are spaces now starting to appear in the garden. So we'll be able to plant these and then once the light levels start to dip, that will then trigger the flower formation. Today, I'm planting out my china asters. Don't they look absolutely terrific? So we're going to nestle them in the ground, planting 22 centimetres apart. Look at those roots. And before you know it, we'll have a carpet of technicolour flowers all the way through late summer and into autumn. My goodness me, I've just come down to have a look at the China Asters and they're all starting to bloom now. Let me move the camera right back so you can see. <laughs> look at that. This is my favourite, amazing lavender grey. And we do have samples in here as well. So there will be other Asters you've not seen before because I'm having a bit of a, a bit of a trial. Be rude not to, wouldn't it? These are the king size apricot. They're taller. They've got this beautiful, delicate apricotty colour, and they're a mix. So these are singles, doubles, and semi doubles in this beautiful, delicate apricotty colour. They've still got a little bit more opening to do, and look, we've got so many buds so many buds they look absolutely wonderful jumbled up together in an arrangement all the different shapes and sizes absolutely exquisite As always, all the information that you need for growing your China Asters is available in the Spring Grow Along Handbook. China Asters do vary slightly in height, so if you turn to your checklist section in your handbook, you'll see that I've popped the height in there for you, so you know when it comes to planting outside, you can quickly check which one should go at the front and which one should go at the back. <laughs> 